So hi, I'm Rishab. This is Rishab in Cloud, and today we'll be talking about how I went from technical support representative role to a cloud engineer role. So if you're not familiar, I'll give you a bit of context. I don't have a computer science degree, but I do have a computer networking and technical support diploma. I know it's quite a big name for a diploma, but basically it was a two year diploma where I learned about operating systems, how networks work and few hardware courses. So basically it prepared you for an IT help desk kind of role. And the reason why I didn't went with a computer science degree because it was very expensive as an international student to get bachelor's degree here in Canada. But nevertheless, I made best out of what I was given. You know, I didn't excel in the first semester, but the next three semesters, I was like very serious, really loved going in depth about how networks work, you know, and how different parts of the operating system works. It is also when I fell in love with Linux and hardware. Hence, you know, you see my custom computer and me always geeking out with a new build every three years. So as part of that diploma, I was required to do a two month unpaid internship, also known as co-op. So if you're in Canada, you, are, you might be familiar with the term co-op. I was able to land a junior IT admin role. So this was a SaaS company, very small. There were 38 employees and I was going to be helping the IT head with some IT tasks for two months. So I do have kind of this mind map that I made reflecting on my career, right? So right now we are here. If I just look at the canvas, no computer science degree, just a diploma. I landed a junior IT admin co-op, hence it is in dotted lines because this was just an internship. But I really worked on some really cool projects. You know, one of them was re-imaging some of the old servers and installing latest version of Ubuntu server. It was just so fun because I have never really worked with enterprise servers. So they were like really big and really loud. They had a data center on site. So it was really fun to work. And then I also worked on a Raspberry Pi project, which basically displayed dashboards and uptime of different services since this was a SaaS company and they used AWS as the cloud provider where the infrastructure was hosted. The AWS bit, as I mentioned it, it's pretty key and you'll see as I mentioned, as I mentioned what happened next. And also stick to the end because I'll share a resource that'll help you to get started either if you're in help desk or sysadmin. I'll share a resource which will help you get started to upskill to land that cloud engineer or DevOps engineer role. So, okay, two months internship co-op, you know, ended and I didn't only work with the IT team, but also I worked with, you know, the software developers and the cloud engineering team on little projects where I could come and help. That really made a good image for me in their eyes, right? So they were like, oh, Rishabh wants to like really work and he's someone who is passionate about you know working in tech so they were able to open up a technical support role for me because that team was kind of understaffed i couldn't work in it but the it head i was working under you know he kind of was a mentor to me even though i only worked for two months we had that relationship early on within like first month you know he we really clicked on a lot of things so like he was into gaming you know he also loved building custom computers things like that and he advised me that I should take this technical support role because this is you know a great starting point I at that time worked full-time at a gas station while I was doing my co-op so I was earning ten dollars an hour at the gas station and the technical support role that they offered you know was definitely paying way more than ten dollars an hour I believe it was around sixteen dollars an hour until probation and then it was gonna bump up to eighteen dollars an hour so I'm like okay you know this is a tech support role, I'll be doing IT things, so I'll take this on. So that is my first actual full-time role that I got right out of college. I have some bullet points. So what was I responsible for? Basically, I was going to be doing product support for the SaaS. So the SaaS was basically a managed printing software. So think of, you know, hospitals and universities, they have like thousands of printers. We built a SaaS where you the IT people could manage those printers more efficiently. So, you know, you had really had cool interface with all the printers and you could see like which ones of them are running out of cartridges or ink and then which ones are running out of paper. 
which ones need maintenance. And then we also worked with dealers directly. So supporting our product was my job. And the tickets that would come were usually through the ticketing system or they could directly call us. So I was you know, on queue where there were three of us and we shared the queue in North America. So it was a round robin, you will get a call and then you had to support the customer, whatever issue they were having. The tickets would also come through email. I learned a lot about networking and OS troubleshooting because, you know, the client side of things would talk to our AWS environment and certain times that connection would not take place. So you had to troubleshoot on the OS level and also on the different network networking level to see why this that not happening. These were the three kind of key points that I was supposed to do. Some of the challenges during that tech support role was, the first one was explaining technical things to non-technical folks. If you have worked or are working in IT help desk or a support role, you know what I'm talking about, you know, some customers, it would be hard for me to kind of troubleshoot or direct them. And over the time, I really learned how to have you know better documentation that I could send to them and also use like tools like you know really great screenshots and steps that would highlight on the tasks that I want them to do in order to support the customer service and soft skills. So customer service, I was okay with that because I was working at a gas station for the last two years. But soft skills, you know, I really had a hard time. I remember like the first week when I started taking calls, you know, sometimes it would be a CTO or a CEO on the other side. I would just be really nervous and would be shaking, but that got really better over the time. And also remember English is my second language and this was like my first professional job. So, you know, it took some time to get comfortable. These were the skills that I really I think gained from this role. So the first one was documentation. Every time we saw like a new pattern or a new case, we had to make sure it was very well documented in our ticketing system and also made sure that next year, you know, we had like three tiers. So our next year of support was aware about what's going on. And if there are any patterns, you know, we might want to report a bug to the software devs. Documentation, second was troubleshooting. The amount of different type of environments and different type of networking configuration that I saw in this role was just crazy. So I think support really gives you like a really big breadth of, oh, you know, people could do things in X manner, but then you'll see some other pattern and people are doing things in Y manner. And that really helped me, I think, to, you know, think differently and also taking a step back and making sure like if they are following Y method, make sure to send them those set of instructions instead of just assuming stuff. And also networks and OS, you know, specifically Unix. So like Linux and Mac OS, I was not using them as a daily driver until like I started supporting them for these customers and I learned a lot. And during this role, now comes the interesting bit of how I transitioned to a cloud engineering role. So I'm not gonna lie, after around like six months, I already made tier two. And as I mentioned, there were three tiers. So like after tier three, you cannot move any further until unless you go to management within the support team we had. After six months in this role, I made tier two and I was like, hey, I stepped back and I was like, I don't want to do this for like longer period. I probably want to transition into something else, but within the tech space. And to be honest, I had no clue what I wanted to do. That's where I would like to point out, like do your research. I have been mentoring a lot of folks, specifically, you know, early career professionals or even college students. And one thing that's being missed out on is doing proper research on what you want to do. What I did is I told my manager that, hey, I want to explore different opportunities within tech. Is it okay if I shadow a few different teams within tech here at the company? And he recommended me that I should start with software developer. So I shadowed software developers for a week. At the end of the week, I kind of knew like, okay, this is not going to be for me. But then the next week I shadowed QA engineers. And then at last I shadowed the cloud engineering team. So for three weeks, I was just shadowing different tech teams at our company. Again, this was easy for me because this was a 38 people company. The environment in your workspace might be different, but just shoot your shot you know, it's, it's worth trying. And if your manager agrees, you know, you can really try out and shadow these different teams to get a feel of what they do day to day. So after those three weeks, the fourth week, I just 
reflected on, okay, you know, these are the things I like and these are the things I don't like. And I came to the conclusion that cloud engineering is what I want to do. And the funny thing is it really tied well with my tech support role because at tier two, some of the issues, you had to escalate them to like tier three and there they would have to log in into the AWS account and like actually troubleshoot on the infrastructure itself. And I got to see that from you know my seniors who were tier three. I was already handling tier two cases. The natural progression for me was to do handle tier three traces for which I needed to understand how we hosted our infrastructure on AWS. So I was kind of already doing that in my tech support role after six months. So I'm like, okay, this is kind of really good progression if I wanna go into you know cloud engineering. And the cloud engineering team was very, you know, they motivated me to like, okay, hey, here's the certification that you should look at since they were only using AWS. They're like, you should focus on AWS as the cloud provider. So I had like a clear path. Also at this time, I was not on social media and I think that really helped. So like I didn't have Instagram. I also didn't look at any YouTube videos to find out what I want to do. Like it was all based on the mentors I had at the company and the information that was available in the context of the path that this company provided. So I started preparing for the AWS Cloud Practitioner which I know this might come to you as a surprise, but you can see it took me three to four months to prepare for this certification. And that's what I want to highlight here is like, take your time to understand the tech. So the certification itself, I know people have been passing it in weeks. I have also seen some crazy stories of them passing it like within a day or two days of preparation. And that's okay because they might be familiar with AWS. I was not. This was my first cloud provider and like intro to cloud computing. So I took my sweet time, you know, really nailed down the concepts that I needed to understand, like things like load balancing, you know, auto scaling. I didn't study that in college or did that in my tech support role. So like I really had to get my hands dirty, log into the AWS console and like deploy infrastructure to learn these. And that's where also I want to give huge kudos to the cloud team because they gave me a test account where I could do things. And I think they gave me like $50 a month uh, to have different services running, which was awesome. So after those three, four months, I'm at around like 11 months in my tech support role. I have now also built a sample application. This application was basically a two tier architecture but I used multiple architecture patterns. So there were three patterns. One of them was like the traditional, you know, I had EC2 instances that were running the database and the front end. I had Nginx configured and also like SSL stuff figured out with Let's Encrypt. But then I had a different architecture where I was using serverless, Lambda, DynamoDB, and also using AWS ACM, which is like the certificate manager and had like different domains for both of the projects. The reason being, this gave me a good topic of discussion when I was being interviewed for the Cloud Ops Engineer role. So coming on to that. So how did I land the Cloud Engineer or the Cloud Ops Engineer role is during that 11 month mark in tech support, there was headcount on the cloud engineering team. And I asked my tech support manager if it is okay for me to apply for this role. You know, he was on the same page because I have been sharing what I want to do. So he agreed. And then I went to the cloud team and I was like, hey, I want to apply for this role. Do you think I'm ready? And they were like, yep, we are ready to vouch for you if you do end up applying. This was also mid acquisition. So like a bigger enterprise company acquired us. So we went from like 38 people company to 2,500 people, but the SaaS product itself still had, you know, 38 people that were focused on that product. So they had a head count and after getting a thumbs up from the cloud team, I applied for the role. But the manager who was going to interview me was from this enterprise company that acquired us. And there were four external applicants who had experience working with cloud. So they were experienced cloud engineers. What really stood out, and I tried to make that as a point during my interview, is I had experience with our product. I knew A to Z how our product was being hosted within AWS, all the different services we use and different architecture methods that we have implemented. And I wasn't shy of mentioning that and also explaining that. This was also pre-COVID. So this is now at 2019, as you can see. So during the interview, 
it was in person and I had access to a whiteboard. So I'm like, hey, is it okay if I use a whiteboard to explain all the different services and architecture we use within AWS? And they were like, yep. So I spent like 20 minutes drawing the entire architecture diagram on a whiteboard from like scratch. Just, I had it thoroughly in my mind. At the end, you know, they agreed to promote me from tech support to cloud engineer rather than hiring someone external based on the knowledge I already had and also they had to obviously, you know, pay less because still got a significant bump from what I was making in tech support, but someone external who was an experienced cloud engineer, they would have to pay more than what they had to offer me. And I think that's fair because I had like zero professional cloud experience, but I had the knowledge and I had a project that I, through which I was able to showcase the skills needed for this role. So that's how it happened. I know this video is gonna be long, but let me know in the comments if you want me to share my experience as the cloud ops engineer, because you can see I already have it documented and how I transitioned to DevOps. But the key things that I want to point out is the roadmap is kind of simple. You can already see like take an IT help desk or a tech support role or a sysadmin is also a really good option but i think the barrier to entry for tech support is less than sysadmin and i've also seen paths where people go tech support sysadmin and then cloud engineering a great friend of mine gwen has that same path where she was doing a tech support or help desk role at apple and then moved on to a sysadmin role and then now she works as cloud advocate at microsoft so check out her story but the key point i think is yes the path is simple but it is not easy I remember back then, not only I would have like eight to five as tech support and you know, I would be exhausted, but I would still spend two hours daily to study, to study for AWS. I just had that kind of passion and hunger to transition into the cloud engineering role. I also remember like for two months, I would stay in the office till like 7 p.m. But that started getting pretty exhausting because you know, you have your day job and then you're like already exhausted by looking at the screen and then you will spend another two hours to study. So what I did is I shifted it around. I would arrive in the office around 6 a.m., study for like two hours until eight and then start working on my tech support job. So I did that for like four months continuously. That is why I was able to like kind of transition within a year from help desk to, you know, cloud ops engineer role. So make sure you kind of have your expectations set right. It definitely is like simple path, but it's not easy. You'll have to put in work. Also, I would suggest like if social media is kind, kind of distracting, like I have a separate video that I want to make on this about screen time and like distractions. But if you're spending a lot of time on spo social media, I would just say that delete it. So like delete YouTube, delete Instagram, Twitter from your phone and like just spend the next six to 12 months upskilling yourself. And as promised, I was gonna share a resource at the end of this video that'll help you in 2024. And the resource is none other than learn to cloud. So learn to cloud guide is an open source guide to help you upskill with cloud computing skills and DevOps skills. It's not a book. It's not a course, but as you can see, there is a very strict path that you can follow. So if you're starting from zero, I would say go to phase zero and kind of go through all the information that is necessary to go to next phase. You have phase one, which is Linux and Bash, Linux Bash and networking. You have phase two, which is programming. Phase three is cloud platform fundamentals. Phase four is DevOps fundamentals and phase five is cloud security, but you get the idea. This guide was built from firsthand experience by Gwen and me because we both kind of shared that self-taught route from going from tech support to landing a cloud engineer role. Go check it out. You don't need to pay for any boot camps. You don't need to pay for highly costed courses. Check this out. We have a lot of resources and we are coming out with a really cool refresh so this will be a v2 so stay tuned check out the guy and i wish you luck on your journey if you are trying to transition from help desk or sysadmin to a cloud engineer role hope you like this video i know it was a long one but you know i wanted to provide value let me know in the comments if you want me to cover my transition from cloud ops engineer and my experience with that role to devops engineer and i can also cover how i landed a role at fang later on so yeah 
Let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.